For years, we've spoken about climate change like it's tomorrow's problem. Like the reason we have to act is... Our children. And our children's children. Or we've spoken as if it's primarily a problem for polar bears. But climate change isn't just tomorrow's problem. It's here today. And the more we've understood, the more we've seen that the climate crisis is a crisis of health. And as climate change dials up, it dials up the threats on our lives, making climate change one of the gravest dangers to our health and our well-being. But even now, we're still not drawing the links between our planet and our safety. So let's talk about all the ways climate change is claiming lives right now, and what we need to be doing to protect ourselves and this world we call home. I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And right now, the world's leaders have gathered in Brazil to try to solve climate change. This is COP, standing for Conference of the Parties, which, I maintain, is the least useful acronym of all time. Anyway, this is the 30th COP, COP30. And as you might have noticed, the first 29 COPs didn't quite succeed at stopping climate change. 30th times the charm, I guess. Anyway, there's so much to say about this COP, its goals, its structure, its organisation, but today I want to focus on something completely different. I want to talk about what's actually at stake at these negotiations, how tackling climate change is vitally important. And I mean that literally, how climate change is a matter of life and death. For the last three COPs, this link has been explicitly recognised by a health day, drawing the links between the planet's health and our health. And no, I'm not talking about future generations' health, not that I don't care about future generations, but I also care about me. So let's talk about all the ways climate change is hurting our health around the world today. This is especially important right now as The Lancet, the renowned British medical journal, just published this year's Lancet Countdown Report on Health and Climate Change. The report highlights just how severely, and in just so many ways, climate change is hurting us. And the more greenhouse gases we churn into our atmosphere, the more we heat the planet, and the more harm we do to ourselves. And just a quick note that this video has been made with support from the Melior Foundation. But as usual, I'm not selling you anything, and I have creative control and responsibility for everything that you're about to watch. Okay, let's start with the most obvious way global warming is hurting us extreme heat. Heating the planet has, surprise surprise, made heat waves more common and more severe. In fact, scientists now understand every single heat wave we see is now exacerbated by all the burning fossil fuels we've been doing. And when we're hit by heat, it can cause heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and ultimately claim lives, especially impacting the oldest and most vulnerable among us, and stretching our healthcare system's abilities to cope. As I discussed a few months ago, researchers calculated that a European heat wave this year claimed three times as many lives as it would have otherwise if we hadn't done that whole climate change thing. Extreme heat is a global killer. The Lancet report highlights that it's killing one person a minute globally, an increase of around two-thirds since I was a kid. But climate change isn't just about extreme heat. It's also pumping up the water cycle. This means, depending on where you are in the world, heavier downpours and more devastating droughts. Flooding and droughts can have direct impacts on human health. Droughts can severely impact people's ability to get enough food and drinking water, and floods, as well as the direct dangers that deluges pose, can spread incredibly serious diseases like cholera and typhoid. And actually, disease spread is a very real threat from climate change. Floodwaters can provide perfect conditions for mosquitoes, carrying diseases like malaria and dengue with them. Dengue is a disease that can be especially dangerous for women and for children. As parts of the world become hotter and wetter, that allows mosquitoes to spread further and further. 
and ticks can spread to new areas, carrying infections like Lyme disease with them. And those mosquitoes, insects that live in warm, humid conditions, were recently discovered in Iceland for the first time. Honestly, there's just something I find so fundamentally creepy about this discovery. And climate change could drive completely new disease outbreaks too. Some scientists are worried that climate change is raising the risk of diseases jumping from animals to humans, potentially even threatening the next pandemic. Now, for lots of us right now, when we think of angry weather, we think of tropical storms, especially with Hurricane Melissa fresh in our minds, and with Jamaica still reeling from the damages. Scores dead, thousands homeless, and damages totaling a staggering third of Jamaica's entire annual wealth. Hurricanes and their impacts are interlinked with climate change in many ways. And for Melissa, we know that the ocean surface conditions that led to the hurricane were made hundreds of times more likely by climate change. I could talk about the links between between climate change and hurricanes for an entire video. And in fact, that's something I have already done. I'll drop a link at the end. Hurricanes can hurt us in multiple complex ways. There's the immediate threat from the winds and the rains, but the damage to infrastructure can have knock-on effects on people's lives for years, for decades. And sometimes, for some places, there aren't years and decades between one catastrophic tropical storm and the next. Global heating is also contributing to wildfires by creating hotter and often drier conditions, providing more fuel for the fire. Now, of course, when we think of wildfires being deadly, we think of being caught in the flames. But actually, the biggest danger is from the smoke. That's something that can affect people far away from the fires and cost lives long after the fires have gone out. Like one US study found that over a decade, the toxic air from Californian wildfires claimed around 50 thousand lives, dwarfing the deaths from the flames themselves. While we're speaking of air pollution, I mention this a lot because it matters a lot. We hugely underestimate how big a deal it is. Often we talk about air pollution as if it's just an inconvenience, but globally it causes 8 million deaths per year. That translates to one out of every eight deaths. And around half of those deaths are caused by the same thing causing climate change, burning fossil fuels. Honestly, I can just never get over how much we're willing to turn a blind eye to the death and destruction that our fossil fuel habit is causing us. A new study from Amnesty also found that around a quarter of the world's population, so two billion people live near fossil fuel projects. Living in these areas can increase the risk of respiratory and heart diseases, birth issues, and increase the threat of certain forms of cancer. And that's just one way that the things causing climate change are also directly killing us. You see, it's not just burning fossil fuels that drives climate change. The food we eat is fueling global heating, most notably red meat, dairy, and food waste. Our diets are unhealthy for the planet and unhealthy for us. Like in the UK, around 50,000 deaths a year are caused by eating too much red and processed meat. That's something like one in 12 deaths. Meanwhile, of course, other parts of the world are suffering through food insecurity, caused, at least partly, by all the climate stuff we've been talking about. Compared to a generation ago, around 100 million more people now report they're struggling to get enough food due to floods and droughts. Then there's deforestation. Chopping down forests is making heat waves even worse than they would be thanks to climate change alone, as the cooling effects of the forest disappear. And fewer trees means less protection from disasters like floods and fires. Look, 
all this is connected. We've not even spoken about the knock-on effects, like how losing your livelihood due to any one of these factors can affect your ability to live safely and securely, how these disasters can trigger societal instability, conflict, even war, or how conflict and war in turn fuel climate change. Okay, so executive summary. Climate change is killing us today in just so many ways. And if you value conversations like this that do untangle the web that weaves climate to our health, then liking, commenting, subscribing helps keep you in the loop and bring videos like these to new people. But just to emphasize, the point of this video isn't that we're helplessly screwed. If I genuinely thought that, I wouldn't be sat here. I'd be out there touching as much grass as I could get my hands on. Yes, climate change is hurting us here and now, but for each and every one of these harms, there are things we can do. Take heat waves. We can save so many lives by responding to the heat we face. Educating people, especially older people, about what to do. Offering cooling centers, enforcing regulations so no one has to work or live outside when conditions are unsafe. For storms and floods, better defenses and warning systems can make a massive difference. When it comes to air pollution, we can provide clear warnings and instructions when levels spike and regulate everything from vehicles to factories, especially the ones positioned near people. And when it comes to our diet, we can shift to so called called planetary diets. There's no one single best diet, it depends on where and who you are, but ultimately we can make sure we're eating in a way that's good for us and good for the planet. And since we live on the planet, that is also good for us too. But look, I'm not gonna bullshit you. These are all problems that get worse the more we heat the planet. As we keep emitting and the climate crisis accelerates, the threat to our health also accelerates. But even now, the direct danger is barely mentioned and is barely motivating our leaders to act. While there's loads we can and should do to protect ourselves right now, there's no getting around the fact that we have to stop emitting. Climate change brings deadly risks to us all, especially to the most vulnerable among us. Risks that only get harder to bear, the more the world heats. But the good news is that most of these dangers stop getting worse when we stop the heating, when we stop emitting. And so we need every single tool we've got to start lowering emissions as rapidly as possible. There are things we can all do to contribute to that, whether it's reflecting on our own emissions, raising the volume of the conversation, say by sharing informative videos from climate scientists, and by turning up the pressure on our leaders which of course is especially relevant right now as the 30th COP wraps up. A COP which is meant to be all about turning words into action. It's easy to forget that progress really has been made and what we need to do now is ramp it up as quickly as possible. The Lancet report highlights that more people are connecting climate and health than ever before. Renewables are getting built like never before, like I never could have imagined. And while emissions still aren't falling, they're at least flatlining, something that seemed impossible just a couple of years ago. So here's hoping we start to see emissions fall very soon, for our grandkids, for our kids, and for us. And while we're talking about the progress and its limitations, make sure you're subscribed because my next video is going to be all about what has and hasn't happened in the decade since the Paris Climate Agreement. Anyway, I promised you all a video about hurricanes and here it is. Okay, until next time. Bye. Sharing info. Blah 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 bl